But now let's turn to another issue around illegal immigration. And my guest, uh, Senator Roger Marshall from Congress, and leading a group of GOP senators on the Senate floor to demand the vote of no confidence for DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who, as a subject, is in the House today, uh, not in the House literally, but as the impeachment in the House uh, continues to play out. So, Senator, great to have you here. Uh, The importance, sir, of the vote of no confidence and what potential actions, if any, can come from that. Yeah, well, good morning, David. Happy New Year to you and your listeners. You know, I I think the importance of our vote of no confidence yesterday or trying to get this through the Senate is to put some wind beneath the wings of the impeachment hearing on the House. Really, an impeachment hearing in so many ways is is driven by, by public sentiment. And I think it was good for America to see, uh, in this case, I think we had six or seven Republican senators get on on the stage, so to speak, in the Senate and talk about this as a national security crisis, that this open border issue, um, you know, 10, 12,000 people crossing the border a day, 1.7 million gotaways, that this is a national security crisis. But to listen to my friend across the aisle, only one Democrat had the guts to show up and speak against this. And they speak of it from an immigration problem. But David, you you understand that this is a national security issue. Yes, we have a broken immigration system, but we wanted to point out that this is a national security issue, that Andrew, Andrew Mayorkas has uh, broken the law, that he should be impeached immediately. And we said, send the message to Joe Biden to say, buddy, you're next. In 300 days, we're gonna fire you as well. If I may, Senator, and I realize this is on the floor, but you said one Democrat showed up to speak against uh, this this vote of no confidence. Can you give us a little more on that? And I realize that this is within the body, if you will, but who showed up to speak against this? What was the context of that, uh, of those remarks? Right. So Senator Tom Carper from Delaware is the senator that showed up. Uh, he's on, this would have fallen under the jurisdiction of the Homeland Security Committee that I'm on, and he's on that committee as well. And really his remarks, and he's a, he's a very kind gentleman who's retiring this year. His whole remarks are about the humanitarian, it's the right thing to do, we should be helping our neighbor, all those types of things. that really had no argument that, the, that there was anything but an open border there. So his context is really through immigration, that we should welcome everybody. And what I pointed out to him, according to some Gallup study recently, 150 million people would move to the United States right now if we would let them. You know, that's half our population. So there needs to be some type of order to this. And again, first and foremost, whether you're a father, whether you're in the military, you know, whatever your position is in life, we always think about security first for our families. So my priority has always been national security, next to the economy. You know, you can go down the list, but national security is my priority. Their priority is immigration. They they seem, whether it's the senator or the Democrats, the Biden administration, Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, the president himself, the border arena, uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president, they seem to openly defy the reality of what you and I are discussing. And just based on ICE numbers, 170,590 illegal aliens inside the country. Almost, This is based on the ones they know. Almost half of them with criminal records, with an average of four charges and convictions each, more than 33,000 charges for assault, weapons offenses over 7,000, kidnapping 1,600 plus, removals include suspected gang members, to your point about national security, 139 known or suspected terrorists. And I could keep going, but the point here that for the senator to stand there and ignore these numbers, I mean, Senator... They're lying to the American people. Right. They, they are lying. And that's why we have to show elections do have consequences. And, and what, what my job and your job is, is to put a light on this, to say, look, the Democrats are against supporting Israel. Look, the Democrats are against securing our border. 
I've yet to be convinced by any statement that Joe Biden has said that he wants to secure the border. He's giving us a little bit of lip service now, now that his numbers are so low, but it's basically lip service. I mean, the president's supposed to lead the country. He's supposed to be the person saying, here's the hill we need to attack. Let's go climb this hill. Let's climb this mountain. And right now, when we have 10,000 people crossing our border every day, this is the number one most immediate threat to our nation, national security-wise. Look, I understand the media and senators often maybe have a little bit of hyperbole, but what you're stating, what I'm stating, is actually understating the problem right now. Uh, Again, 300,000 Americans have died in three years from fentanyl or opioid poisoning, 90% of it coming across the southern border. That's three times more than we lost in the Vietnam War. What part of national security does the president and and Secretary Mayorkas not understand?